today, the screen GPUs are in big trouble with this. Huge performance boosts for everyone, NVIDIA's new monster GPU destroys everything and four RX 8000 GPUs. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, we have a huge story on an Intel APU, or technically it's an SOC because APU is AMD's branding of a system on a chip, but either way, the company looks to be planning a monster new chip set to compete with AMD's upcoming Strix Halo. Remember, this is the B set to get up to 40 CUs for its integrated GPU, which is way more than the desktop 7600 XT. Either way, a shipping manifest that listed something called Arrow Lake Halo was recently discovered. What's wild is that this this Halo edition was originally leaked years ago by the YouTube channel Adore TV. At the time, it was clearly meant to compete with Apple, but obviously it was delayed. According to that, it would come with 20 workgroup processors, which is slightly less than Intel's A580, though this would likely be made from Battlemage, so it would of course be faster than that, potentially even significantly faster. And given it's been so long, there's even a chance that it comes with more cores. Ultimately, this is the beauty of competition, and it could seriously mean the end of low to mid-range discrete GPUs. Next up for today, Ryzen CPUs just got a massive performance boost in more ways than one, and we have benchmarks. But first, for those who didn't see it, I recently went on a cruise, and I rarely go out of the country, so for half the trip, I was trying to figure out whether I could make any calls or texts, and for how long, how much data I had. Let's just say I didn't want to get home to a huge roaming bill. If only I would have known about today's sponsor before I left. They're called Aerolo, and they're the world's first eSIM store. That may seem a little confusing, but it basically means no more roaming fees. No more trying to buy a SIM locally, basically no worries, and it's so easy to use. All you have to do is download the app, choose an eSIM from one of their 200 plus countries based on your destination, install it, and then activate it when you're at your destination. It couldn't be easier. So learn from my mistake and join over 10 million other world travelers by visiting my link in the description and install Air load today. Plus, when you use my code GAMERM3 in all caps, you get $3 off your first eSIM. Once again, visit my link or check out the QR code and use code GAMERM3 today. Now back to the story, if you saw my recent video, you know that AMD was running admin mode when they tested their Ryzen 9000 CPUs. That was causing a performance difference between AMD's own benchmarks and reviewers. It has to do with the difference in branch prediction between the standard Windows version and admin mode. Luckily, AMD and Microsoft worked together to bring us a fix for the future 24H2 update. And this brings me to the first part of this story. AMD sent me an email yesterday letting me know that the update has now been back ported to the current 23H2 version of Windows. All you have to do is look at optional updates within Windows Update and install this one here. And if you want to know just how much better it is, we now have performance numbers. In a new video from Hardware Unboxed, they looked at the average uplift from 40 games at 1080p. And as you can see, the 9700X got a performance boost of 11%, while the 7700X saw a 10% performance jump. Not only that, but this even helped Intel in some games though it's not as big of a difference. With this, the 9700X is still performing right at the 7700X, but don't forget that the 9700X is a much lower TDP. And that's where the next part of this story comes in. MSI just released a BIOS update that offers the ability for 600 series boards to up the TDP to 105 watts from the current 65 watts. And someone was already able to test it out in Cinebench R23. According to them, it got a very impressive 13% performance boost, meaning if the rumors about AMD updating these CPUs to 105 watts are true, which given MSI just released essentially this, it looks to be true, AMD CPUs are getting some big performance gains. Next up, NVIDIA's next-gen Blackwell GPU just broke every record in the MLPerf benchmark suite. We're talking Llama, Mistral, Stable Diffusion, and more. What's wild is that in Llama 2, it actually got four times the performance versus the H100 and server workloads with 10,756 tokens made and 3.7 times the performance in offline workloads. Not only that, but NVIDIA's Hopper GPUs just got a big performance boost thanks to optimizations in the CUDA stack, proving that software is nearly just as important 
important is the hardware. In fact, they show that in Llama 2, the H100 is now beating AMD's own MI300X with less wattage. And the H200 saw up to a 35% improvement in Llama 3.1 from July to August. Basically, Nvidia is continuing to not only release powerful new accelerators, but they're also vastly improving their older generation products as well. Time will tell if AMD can ever truly catch up. And lastly for today, we just got some huge info on AMD's next-gen RX 8000 GPUs. Starting things off, we have a new report from the outlet Benchlife and later reported by video cards. In it, they revealed that the RX 8000 cards are split up into four different variants. And as you can see, these are code names for upcoming cards, with the first two likely being built from the Navi 48 GPU and the last two with Navi 44. Obviously, the lower-end ones use a cut-down version of their respective cards. According to video cards, the top end card would be the RX 8800 XT going down to the 8600. Not only that, but there was a tweet from the well-known leaker Kepler on Twitter. And as you can see, he lists some numbers, which come to find out are three different memory configurations for RX 8000. First, we have a 256-bit bus with 20 gigabit per second memory for a total of 640 gigabytes per second bandwidth, which is much faster than the 7900 GRE. Then we have a 256-bit bus again, with 18 gigabit per second for a total of 576 gigabytes per second bandwidth. And finally is a 192-bit bus with 19 gigabit per second memory for a total bandwidth of 456 gigabytes per second. And the news doesn't stop there as Kepler later revealed the Infinity Cache present in next gen, with two variants getting 64 megabytes and one getting 48. Obviously, Kepler only has access to three GPUs, so maybe AMD is debating on a fourth SKU. I'm really Really not sure, but clearly RX 8000 is getting closer and closer to launch. We'll just have to see how well it can compete with Nvidia's next gen. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for next-gen GPUs or are you more excited about these monster APUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to install Aerolo down in the description below. And as always, have a great day!